Good morning, Secretary Panello. This is Bea Jacinto, the host of Straight from Radio Bandido. Welcome to our show and thank you for participating. Good morning, Bea. Secretary Panello, you are very close to President Duterte. What do you think President Duterte will do after his term? Do you think he will retire? And if the newly elected president invites him to join the next administration, do you think he will accept? I think he will not retire in oblivion. He will be active, articulating certain interests protective of the people. Now, the question is, Will he accept any position in the new administration? I do not think so. Even if he does not accept anything, any position, he remains very, very interested in the affairs of the government. Thank you, Secretary Panello. Secretary Panello, what is your position on the Russia-Ukraine war? Well, I think the position of the government, specifically President Rodrigo Roa III, is very correct. <clears throat> he is maintaining a neutral position. And I agree with him. We must remember that the policy of the president, friends to all and enemies to none, have helped us. But I do not think it helped us in our issue against China. If you remember, we won the arbitral ruling, but that even the U.S. could help us on that, despite the mutual defense treaty, despite the obvious assault on our people in the China Sea. The U.S. did not leave a finger in defending us. And if we pursued our arbitral claim by being very aggressive, we would have been the other Ukraine because I'm sure China would not welcome such aggressive move. But let me caution those who believe in that stance, that if we have that kind of neutral stance, we will remain forever quiet. No, that policy of friends to all and enemies to none has an exception. And that is if those friends of ours will assault our territorial integrity and sovereignty, then that friend of ours become an enemy and we will protect this country until the last breath of our lives. Thank you, Secretary Panello. Secretary Panello, what is your position on the use of nuclear energy and the use of the mothballed nuclear plant in Bataan? The president, issued an executive order adopting a nuclear energy program, committing the introduction of nuclear power into our energy mix to provide our country another source of power energy requirements. In view of the increasing electricity rates, the prices, and our commitment in the United Nations to move away from coal, because as we all know, its environmental impact is great. Now I agree that we have to use nuclear energy in view of the energy crisis in the Philippines. And the use of nuclear energy in countries like China, Japan, and South Korea is very successful. So it should give us a reliable source of energy and we should veer away from our dependency on coal. So I think, I agree 100% that we should now look into the possibility of using nuclear energy. Otherwise, mapagiwanan po tayo if we do not develop nuclear power. E tandaan natin, matagumpay naman sa ibang bansa ang paggamit. My next question for you is this. PDP Laban has no presidential candidate but has adopted Sara Duterte as its vice presidential candidate. What can you say about the choice of Mayor Sara on former Senator Bongbong Marcos as her running mate? That's a good question. Well, <clears throat> I am happy that he has 
Mayor Sara as a running mate <clears throat> in the person of Bongo Marcos because one, he has not criticized the president relative to his performance, unlike the others. Number two, he has made a call for the unity of our countrymen. And number three, which is most important to me, he has committed to continue with the changes made by President Rodrigo Rowan. Thank you, Secretary Panello. What is your proposed priority legislation if you are elected as senator? Well, I have so many priority legislations, but I'll mention some of them. But the more important ones are, one, the legislation relative to the protection of children with special needs and the legislation on free education. Number one, <clears throat> children with special needs require a different kind of caring. It is most difficult to care children with special needs. And this is the problem of so many parents, millions of parents. The children with special needs has been recorded to be 5 million and 100,000 children with special needs all over the country. Now, the price of special education is prohibited as in. You're just like sending school to medicine. That's how expensive it is. The therapy is also very expensive, just like uh, sending these children to school. And what if these parents or these 5.1 million children with special needs die ahead of them? Who will take care of these people? You cannot rely on their siblings simply because they have their own families. Who will? Nobody. You'll find them in the streets. Since I know difficult it is to raise a child with special needs, I committed myself and I swore to myself that I would introduce legislation if I had the opportunity to do so to provide caring and help to the parents as well as to the special children. <clears throat> Apropos to this, there should be a law that will require the government to provide free special education to this child, free therapy. And I will also introduce a legislation that will obligate this government to establish caring facilities all over the country where these children with special needs are found. Yeah, yan po ang aking gagawin sa Senado. At kahit nga po hindi ako maging senador, eh, abay talagang sinumpa ko na naggagawa ko ng paraan. Yung pong free education na sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina, alam niyo ba na merong free education? Sa Coleo, ah, yung tertiary act. Pero alam mo ang naging problema doon. 12% lamang na pinakamahirap na nakakapasok at 17% ng ubod ng yayaman nakakapasok pa at 64% ng mga upper middle upper middle class na nakakapasok. The intention of the 2017 Tertiary Act Education known as free tuition. E para yung mahihirap makapasok sa koleyo. Pero yung requirement sa entrance exam, bumabagsak sila doon. Bakit, bakit naman? Ay, unang-una. Unang-una, paano ka makakakuha ng entrance exam kung hindi ka naman graduate ng high school? Eh, karamihan sa mga Pilipino, hindi ka naka-graduate naka ng high school dahil sa kahirapan. Di po ba? Pangalawa, kung nakagraduate ka man ng high school, pag kumuha ka ng exam, yung mga mahihirap, aba, luging-lugi po sila, they are not well-equipped. Kung ikukumpara mo sa mga mayayaman, sa middle class, hindi po ba yung mga may kaya, Abay, prep school pa lang. Mga private schools talagang maayos ang kanilang mga pag-aaral. Kaya, ready-ready sila sa entrance exam. Ay, kukumpara mo doon sa may hihirap. <laughs> Hindi po ba? Hindi naman sila. Wala naman sila mga tutor. Iba eh. Kung mga lugi sila. Talagang, that will explain why only 12% ang nakakapasok na may hihirap. At yung 64% na well-equipped pati yung 70% mayamat, eh, dominated nila yung ganong sektor. Abay, babaguhin po natin. Ako, sa akin po palagay, pag pinanganak kang Pilipino, eh, dapat libre ka ng edukasyon. At lilimitahan natin yung mga mayayaman at saka yung upper middle class. Dahil can afford naman kayo, siguro 10% sa inyo pwede pumasok na libre. O, yun po ang akin. Marami pong salamat. Ma'am Bea Zento. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Secretary Panello. 
This has been straight from Radio Bandido.